this is going to impact so many thousands of patients, um, and, and and that's just you know, not even counting just the the patients that I will take care of personally, but the patients that that we affect as we train other people. Our goal with the surgery residency program is really not to create the same humanitarian aid surgeon over and over in a cookie cutter fashion, um, but we really want to investigate what it is that residents are passionate about and create a custom educational experience for them. We're given the luxury of spending six months learning these procedures that our, our colleagues really don't in the rest of the program. Um, for instance, a vasectomy. So that seems like a really simple procedure. Um, it, it is for a urologist, but the average general surgeon graduates not having done any vasectomies. And that is a common procedure in some areas of the world where as a surgical provider, you know, if you're not able to provide that, that really has a big impact on your population. So as residents train, uh, they learn how to handle complex emergencies and emergencies in other specialties as they would have to do in an area without other surgeons present. Um, but they also learn how to manage surgeries in a low resource way. My experience in Kenya last year, I actually went back to Tenwick Hospital, which is where my interest in surgery and global surgery all started. And so for me, it was particularly special to go back to the hospital as a physician. It was just a privilege. I mean, this is like an extremely talented, hardworking group of residents through the PACS program, the Pan-African Association of Christmas Surgeons. Into a place like this, it's probably more so a learning experience for me than me you know, going and teaching them how to practice. Some parts of the world are suffering from diseases and problems that, that we don't see anymore because we took care of them hundreds of years ago. Nobody should have to die from appendicitis anymore. That's, that's crazy. Nobody should have to die from obstructed labor anymore. Nobody should have to have their leg amputated after a very simple fracture. Nobody, you know, th there's so many bellwether procedures that are very readily addressable by very regimented educational and training programs, things that the dollar will just mean so much more for people's lives. All of us in the program, I think, are motivated and inspired to help the sickest, the poorest, the least advantaged people in the world, and to work with teams of people abroad uh, as well as here to try and you know, develop strategies and programs to advocate for those patients and bring to them the surgery that everyone should have access to. For sure I see myself involved in global surgery projects for the rest of my career. The reality is if I really want to impact whole communities, I realize, and this is all from my global first global surgery year, spending time at the World Health Organization headquarters in Geneva, um, going to Mongolia, to Vietnam, to Malawi, to you know, these other places in the world where you don't even have betadine to scrub your hands with. <laughs> I just realized that if I want to have more impact, um, there's more I need to learn.